Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and GD Native is dead. Well, actually GD Native will be dead with Godot 4. However, this isn't so sad of news because GD Native is technically being replaced with GD Extension. Now this is definitely gonna have some ramifications. If you currently use a GD Native plugin, it's going to have to be ported to GD Extension. Now, if you've got no idea what the heck I'm talking about, don't worry, I'm gonna fill you in right now. So Godot, I did a, uh, a post a while back, back in July of 2020, about the various different ways you can use the C++ programming language with the Godot engine. And basically there are three ways. You can do native development, which is basically extend the game engine yourself. Um, you can do GD native, which is what we we're talking about today, or you could do modules. Now modules are basically extensions to the engine, but they kind of re-require you to actually rebuild the engine from source. Whereas GD native hit that nice middle ground. What it allowed you to do is um, create bindings to basically DLLs or dynamic libraries. Uh, and it kind of was a middle ground approach to things. It's not as tightly coupled in as modules were, uh, but it still allows you to write native code. Well, what we've got now is GD extensions is gonna move you a little bit closer to the modules level of integration. However, it's still going to be dynamic. So you don't have to rebuild Godot uh, to actually get your extensions to work. So it's gonna make it easier to support multiple platforms. So there was a blog post today over on GodotEngine.org. Um, and you see here, this is from Bastien Olege. I don't know if I said that last name right, but basically uh, introduces GD native successor GD extension. So this is coming with Godot 4. It is a new implementation of GD native. Again, this is basically GD native 2.0. Uh, it is an interface between the underlying um, C libraries and uh, your actual code. Uh, there's a new registration system. It's now part of ClassDB. This means classes implemented in plugins are indistinguishable from core classes. That means when you're using them in the actual uh, editor, it's as if they were native. So it, it will basically provide native level code. Another cool thing that's going to go on here is that help pages will automatically be generated from uh, the properties, methods, signals, and so on that you implement. Now, they're still working on the ability to add descriptions to each one. Uh, so this is implemented in two different branches, GD headers repository, GD CPP repository. I'll show you that in a second. The build process is really simple. Basically you clone that repository there and then you clone the other repository into it and then you run this scons build script. Uh, you, so you are going to need to get the um, extensions api.json and if you change your Godot implementation, you're going to have to rebuild that uh, binding. Basically that's just basically a set of um, instructions on the methods that are supported inside of Godot, if you can think of it shortly. And then here's details on how to set up your own code. We'll look at that all in just a second. Uh, GD extensions only been tested on Linux and Windows. Support for all the other platforms are on the roadmap. Uh, so that is that. So if you're interested in learning more, well, first off, there are the two repositories. Uh, clone the Godot uh, CPP and then change into that directory and then clone down the Godot headers. This will get you the extensions API JSON file um, that you need there. Uh, and basically then you are ready to go. So let's go take a look at the content. So here we are. This is uh, the example CPP. This shows you how to implement your own GD native uh, extension in C++. You can see it's pretty straightforward. Basically, uh, you're binding, uh, well, that's, destruct, that's creation and shutdown. They're basically just logging things out. But you do a call to bind methods and you're basically saying all of the things that you implement. So you're implementing simple func, simple constant function, and so on and so forth. Now, the cool thing here is you can also easily do uh, signals. So you can emit a signal and to emit a signal back to Godot, basically all you do is call emit signal and then the name of the signal, that's kind of it. Um, and then if you go in here, here's the header file, same thing. It's basically just the uh, class definition of everything that we were just working with. Uh, register your types. Again, pretty straightforward on the whole. A lot of this is pretty boilerplate code. Uh, but so the heart of it is basically you implement this header file that has, again, bind method is the, the key one that kind of uh, exposes all of your C++ or C code back to the Godot game engine. Um, and then mostly it's just a matter of, of implementing all of the things. And again, the implementation is pretty clean. You can see how to deal with variants. So if something has multiple different arcs, you can handle that as well. Um, 
And you can see here how you can get access to things like the viewport and so on. It's pretty uh, clean and straightforward to work with. Again, you use scones to build your project. And then this creates, and I'm not 100% certain. Here, let me go back here. Go take a look. See, temp. So Godot CPP. You're going to find the output here is it creates the lib that you can go ahead and use. And the test, you'll see here your end result is a GD extension. And that is what you use in your own project. And here you can see actually some code from the GD script side of things. So let's go take a look at that one. So here is your demo example. Here is the code. And here you can see how they are calling uh, back to the example class. So the example is named example in this case. So here you see emitting a custom simple. Uh, calling the various different functions. So again, once it is implemented, as it, it was as if your code was part of the engine itself. So that's kind of the, the whole of the project here. Now, again, uh, do be aware, this, this exposes the same amount to uh, the, uh, the, the, the C++ side of things as GD native. So basically you can do everything, sorry, as uh, GD script. So in this, you could do anything that you could do using GD script. Just that's in terms of the scope of functionality. There are still some things that would require you to extend the engine itself. And there are still a few use cases where you could go ahead and use modules. But a lot of people are going to find with this new version, you could actually take your modules and port them instead to be extensions. So that is where we stand right now. Again, if you wanna get started with this, the instructions here are pretty straightforward. Again, you want to go ahead, clone the Godot CPP, file, uh, CPP project, switch into it, clone the Godot headers project so you get your extensions API. And then we go back to here and your instructions are pretty simple. Just do a scones build like so and you are good to go. So this is ultimately going to be the future of the extension system in Godot. It's simpler to work with, it's easier. Uh, in the end, it creates the GD extension, so this replaces the old GDN lib. Um, and it's hopefully going to make creating a consistent extensions a fair bit simpler. Um, and that that is it. That is the extent of the news today. Again, if you want to learn a little bit more about these backstories, I'll link to this in the linked article down below as well. Uh, so you can see about native development uh, and modules and so on. I did a full video on that. So if you want to see uh, how you can use C++ and Godot together, uh, that this, these are the various different ways. The key thing to be aware of in Godot 4, the GD native stuff is now going to be called GD extensions and it's a little bit easier to work with, has a little bit more flexibility and power, but that's kind of the extent of it. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, GD native, rest in peace, uh, long live GD extensions. Let me know what you think, comments down below and I shall talk to you all later and goodbye. By the way, no 10 minutes of black silence at the end of this video. Sorry about that. Okay, see you later, goodbye.